Welcome to another MH370 special edition of Daily Airline News. I'm Geoffrey Thomas. Your comments and questions are flowing in about what is happening on the search for MH370. What will they find? And can they disturb the wreckage? And again, I'm delighted to say that I'm joined by UK aerospace engineer Richard Godfrey to answer these questions and look at the latest developments in the search. But first, let's get an update from Richard on the progress of Ocean Infinity's Amada 7806, which is en route to offshore Australia. Richard, what's the latest? Yes, uh, Jeffrey, Amada 7806 is making good progress towards the uh, MH370 search area. Uh, last night, I uh, reported on my website, uh, mh370search.com uh, there was a change of direction um, Armada 7806 is now heading uh, in quite heavy seas uh, at 8.4 knots in a easterly uh, direction on a course of uh, 86.4 uh, degrees currently the storm Talia is still raging in the Indian Ocean and I think uh, the decision was taken to uh, go around the storm to the north rather than to the south. The storm is moving uh, in a southwesterly direction so going around the storm to the north is uh, make, makes uh, a lot of sense. But um, Amada 7806 is still on schedule to arrive on the 23rd of February uh, in the search area. Indeed, and that's uh, the vision that we're showing you at the moment uh, on the screen is the uh, current track of Amada 7806. Um, next, Richard, there seems to be from the feedback we're getting a little bit of confusion about the accuracy um, and sources of some of the material we have published so far. Can you give us a rundown, Richard, of uh, what is in the public domain and, and what we have exclusively uh, that we're reporting? Yes, I think um, the first uh, statement uh, that uh, Oliver Plunkett from Ocean Infinity made um, in a BBC uh, uh, report uh, back on the 20th of December when the Malaysians announced their agreement in principle uh, to a new search. He greeted that with uh, saying, you know, great news. And, uh, and I quote him, and, you know, we look forward to giving you regular updates um, when the, the team is uh, uh, ready and moving out to, to the search area. Uh, as soon as a contract is signed. Well, um, there's still no signature on a contract, but uh, Ocean Infinity are, are moving out to the search area. That's also public knowledge. Uh, there are several websites tracking uh, the the ships uh, and its uh, movements. Um, there was also an interesting... Um, comment on my website from one of the next of kin um, saying how concerned uh, he was about the lack of transpar transparency from the, the Malaysians. Um, the Sky News Australia picked up on, on that news and uh, has broadcast a rather damning statement uh, with an interview with Captain uh, Byron Bailey. Um, so that's in the public domain. And I know that uh, the BBC, The Times, uh, Le Monde in France, the Frankfurter Allgemeine Zeitung in Germany, um, CNA in Singapore, uh, are all uh, preparing uh, stories uh, of a similar nature to the Sky News uh, uh, story. So we can expect, I think, in the coming days, more and more information uh, out there in in the public domain. And then, of course, exclusively, we've had uh, our sources 
reveal several key factors to us, uh, including the fact that the Malaysians have not signed the contract. And then we've also got the AAIB email uh, as well, which you've published on your website. And we've also addressed um, that uh, basically shows there are no particular hurry. But I think that's yeah, about and to change. Richard, we've had many viewers asking about uh, what Ocean Infinity can do with the wreckage of MH370 if a contract is not signed. Now, as it's in international waters, uh, it's the state of registration of the aircraft uh, that has the sole responsibility for the wreckage and to disturb it without permission would be illegal. Now, is my understanding correct? Can you clarify this? Yes, um, you're, you're quite correct. Um, it's either the state of registration or the state where the aircraft uh, accident occurred. And technically and legally, we don't know in which state the uh, aircraft accident occurred. It could have occurred over Malaysia or over uh, Indonesian airspace or Indian airspace or Australian airspace. So that's uh, all brings it back to the state of registration um, who have the legal uh, responsibility. But Ocean Infinity are perfectly entitled in international waters uh, to search. They have uh, equipment on board which will enable them to do that. Uh, they have a set of uh, um, AUVs, or autonomous underwater vehicles from uh, Hugin, uh, 6,000, 6,000 meter rated. Uh, they have uh, remotely operated vehicles, ROVs on board. Uh, they operate a number of different uh, types. They bought uh, 10 uh, Saab uh, uh, remotely operated uh, uh, vehicles uh, back in 2021. They have Schilling. They have the Saab Leopard uh, ROV as well as the CI uh, uh, ROVs. Um, so they're, they're very well equipped to uh, find the wreckage and also to photograph and film the wreckage. But they would need uh, legal permission from Malaysia to actually recover uh, any of the wreckage. Yes. Now, viewers have also asked us, you know, what will be found and we have some, and I wish you to talk to this, uh, we have some footage of what was found um, at the crash site of Air France 447, which crashed in 2009 in the mid-Atlantic. Now, I must stress, the footage we're showing you right now, courtesy of Australia's ABC, is not MH370, but it is Air France 447, um, so, Richard, are we going to find something similar with MH370? Um, similar, but not exactly the same. Air France 447, on which I was booked uh, to fly at one time and yeah. uh, had to stay on business and uh, took a later plane, um, is uh, it was found using a... ROV from uh, Ramor, uh, uh, rated at 6,000 meters, at a depth of uh, 3,980 meters. So the depth is similar um, to MH370, but it was found, uh, Air France 447 was found in relatively flat and silty uh, seabed. Uh, we expect um, with MH370, it's a much more rugged uh, seabed with there are canyons and cliffs and and even underwater volcanoes so the wreckage may well be covered in quite a lot of uh, mud and silt and volcanic ash um, so it'll be different in that respect there were pictures from air france 447 of engine cores uh, landing gear uh, large parts of, of the wing, 
so these larger items I would also expect uh, would be visible on any um, pictures or videos we get uh, when MH370 is found. Yes, and I stress again to the viewers that the vision we have been showing you and are still showing you is Air France 447 and not, I repeat, not MH370. So that uh, concludes um, our uh, uh, update on the progress of the search for MH370 uh, with the MARTA 7806 en route to offshore Australia. And uh, we expect and that, that we'll be going to the search area. We don't know where it will start, whether it'll be the northern uh, hotspots or the southern hotspots. Uh, a lot possibly depends on the weather, um, but we'll keep you up to date on a daily basis. And if there's any breaking news, we'll immediately post that. So thank you very much indeed, Richard, uh, for uh, joining me today for this update. And viewers, uh, please subscribe, please like us, and please do leave your comments. We really do appreciate them. And uh, do tune in tomorrow for another edition of... Uh, daily airline news yeah you're welcome jeffrey thank you